Breaking down the Michigan offense with Nelson Hubble. He's here from Maze and Blue Review. Of course, that is the place to be to check out Michigan football each and every day right there with Nelson. We appreciate Nelson stopping by, breaking down uh, the Maze and Blue for us. Uh, I will afford Michigan's wide receiver slash tight end group the same courtesy as I did a few days ago when we talked Georgia because of Brock Bauer's dominance that you usually go through all the wide receivers. And then at the end of that position breakdown, you say, oh yeah, they got tight ends and this guy's the blocker and this guy's the receiver and that's who they are. But Colston mm-hmm. Loveland's that good that maybe we'll lead with the the tight end position sure. actually, because Colston Loveland, of course, AJ Barner was a key component last year. Mm-hmm. He's gone but your thoughts about Colston Loveland and the tight end position, and then we can move into wide receivers. I mean, Loveland, uh, this is, you know, this is his junior season. So now he's really, you know, taking the lead role here. AJ Barner, he was still, I would say the top tight end for Michigan last year, but Barner was a great, great tight end as well. Um, Played very well next to each other. And so it's Loveland. Uh, That's the guy. And you're going to have to lean on him a lot because, because there's not a ton of depth, at least known depth, behind him. When you start looking, you look at Max Bredesen, who's coming back, who's played fullback, a H-back sort of position for for Michigan. You might see him line up at tight end a little bit more, maybe catch some more passes at least out of the backfield. Curious to see how that goes, because Bredesen now is you know an upperclassman. He's been there, done that, solidified in the offense, played a lot uh, as a fullback, H-back slot type guy. And so those are the two that you know. And then you get into the unknown, which is uh, Marlon Klein, who's going to be probably your next guy as a pass catcher, my guess. Um, Klein comes in. He's 6'6", 250, big dude, uh, three-star recruit. Uh, He was like 215, I think, when he came in. And so he's developed, uh, you know, his strength uh, and uh, added some weight and gotten to a point where he feels comfortable. I'm pushing guys around blocking and also running out there running routes. And so I think Klein is that next guy. It seemed like he was playing, getting some snaps and I think he'll be a good enough uh, backup to Loveland. And then you start looking at who they have beyond that. There's not a ton, like I said, of proven guys. Deacon Tonelli is a, is a guy that might get some rotation. I think Brady Pricegorn, who is from the state of Michigan. Uh, he's a very high four-star recruit. Uh, another guy who, like Klein, is coming in 6'6", 6'5", a little light at the 215 lean. I think he's probably up to 225 now, 230. Uh, so we'll see. Price Gordon has a chance. He's a great pass catcher. So that's where he might come out and play some of that slot receiver type position where Michigan has liked to line Lo- Loveland up at um, to spell him, and even if it's just late game snap. So those are the guys I'm looking at. Price Gordon probably... Uh, in the mix with a couple other guys, hard to say if he'll actually uh, win some significant snaps because he's a freshman and especially at tight end, you can't get moved around uh, in the Michigan rushing attack. You got to be able to block. So there's some guys in there who are able to Bredesen, one of them, Klein and Loveland, uh, I think are probably the the top guys, the leaders. I'm curious to see how they use Bredesen. I, I look at him as a very similar player to Kyle Juszczyk capability-wise because he started as a tight end, and they moved him to H-back, and uh, he's a capable pass catcher. So we'll see how that position group shapes up. It's one of those where you have one guy, and beyond that, it's a lot of unknown. Tyler Morris uh, is the latest example of a guy with great ability, comes into the program, much anticipation, then he kind of gets lost, and I believe he was nicked up as well, and gets lost during the regular season. And then during postseason preparation and practices, he becomes a part of the offense, and then he turns out to make what is one of the biggest plays of the season uh, Mm -hmm. to get even at the uh, Rose Bowl against Alabama. Um, Your thoughts about uh, the wide receiver position, of course, with uh, Roman Wilson moving on and Cornelius Johnson. And also, I got to think that Darius Clemens, who was kind of the next in line, it was difficult to see him go. And that was a bit curious Mm -hmm. why he would, with the the tenured guys getting out of the way, that he would move on. But uh, what do you see at wide receiver? Yeah, so Clemens moves on. He's going to Oregon, which... That's, that is a tough loss because he's a big, fast receiver with a lot of talent. Never seemed to break through to get snaps like we thought he might, uh, especially after having a good fall camp. 
Uh, but nonetheless, here we are. Tyler Morris is that top guy. Uh, we saw Samaj Morgan start to get snaps. That's about it. I mean, those are the guys that you've seen. Fred Moore um, is probably right there earning snaps as well this year. So you're, I mean, Samaj Morgan is probably going to play the slot. He's a small guy. Uh, might see him outside a little bit, but I'm, I'm expecting slot from him. Morris will play um, as one of your outside receivers. Fred Moore as well, uh, I expect. But the other guy right there with him is Carmelo English, who I we just haven't seen on the field that much, but everybody in the program keeps – and people who've you know gone on to the draft uh, just keep talking about Carmelo English. Roman Wilson's mentioned him. Cornelius Johnson's mentioned him. Uh, all this pre-draft stuff you know that you hear – and so you wonder, you're like, okay, well, where does where is his development? And I heard about him all you know summer and fall last year, but we just didn't see him play that much. A guy we also heard about who got hurt uh, quite a bit last year is Peyton O'Leary, who was a walk on, and O'Leary uh, sort of developed like carved a niche for himself uh, before he got injured in fall. And so that's a guy who is a very possession style receiver I think you would best call it um he's he's not like a super fast guy he's not small but he's not like a big dude either he's just sort of is what he is uh and um I think he he's a very sure-handed guy so there's a chance that O'Leary actually breaks through um as a veteran on the roster because he's been around and uh and and O'Leary and Morris are probably the two oldest guys in that room uh and then you bring in a few, a couple true freshmen with Kendrick Bell, which is uh, Ronnie Bell's younger brother, and then Channing Goodwin, who comes from where Jaden Davis went to school down in Charlotte. So Goodwin, I don't think will get snaps this year. Uh, Bell, both of them might like really late game stuff, but I don't think either of them will get much. They're both really project receivers, but we're looking at Fred Moore, Tyler Morris is probably your top two guys on the outside, Samaj Morgan. Uh, and then Carmelo English and Peyton O'Leary right there, maybe battling for uh, that outside spot with Fred Moore. 